Days, the level of Skint Records and Fatboy Slim was very much homegrown, undergroundy, done on a shoestring. We really were Skint Records in those days. So we had a budget of about 75 quid. And I just said, Look, what hasn't been done in video is a video where nothing happens. The gag was that, you know, because it's filmed all grainy and black and white, and it's not an effect, it's just cheap. And then what's really cheap is that it's a really banging acid house record when nothing happens in the video. And they said, well, something up has to happen. I'm like, we can light, light a cigarette or something, you know, halfway through. And yeah, the way I make videos is just me saying, well, look, I'm making one just so you've got something to show on the TV, so you play our track. But I don't want to spend any more money than I have to. There was no kind of performance context. There was no vocals, there's no dance routine. There's just Norman doing the washing up, basically, on the decks. When I first went to see Norman about this, he'd been DJing at Manu Mission for all summer in Ibiza. And it was like going to see Colonel Kurtz at the end of Apocalypse Now, you know, dark and room. You will do cool videos. Blessing, John started with a the remit of like, you have to talk Norman into making videos because he hates making them. <laughs> and he would prefer to make a statement by not making them. But I thought, well, okay, we've got Norman. He didn't actually want to be famous again. I think he'd had enough of being a pop star. The Chemical Brothers made, were, were, were kind of um, looking for, to make little movies, little pieces of art around their, their, their songs, their, their tracks. And I think we kind of nicked all their ideas, didn't we? It's my only performance video, isn't it? <laughs> the video basically illustrates what those nights were like. They were total lunacy. That was kind of the birthplace of, of Big Beat and of Skint and of Fatboy Slim. Because that was like our clubhouse. To be honest, on the night, it was such a hectic mental night. I hadn't even registered that it was being filmed. So when I saw it back, it's like, oh my gosh, you recorded it, you got all that. I said, can I take you know, a piece of the club home with me, a piece of history? And he said, yeah, bring tools. He should not have said that. So we brought a sledgehammer, a saw, uh, a jemmy, and some pliers. I don't know what the pliers were for. I was DJing and soaring through this pillar whilst queuing the next record, just absent-mindedly. But the, the sound guy came over and was like, no, 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 all the power lines are in that pillar. <laughs> it was really exciting that someone had captured probably the most mental of all the Big Beat Boutique nights, because they always used to be quite mad. So what did you like about the track you made the video for? I just liked it. It's very catchy. It was very fun. It was short. It was um, very dynamic. And um, the type of song that's very appropriate for a video. Ah! I'd spoken to Roman, and Roman sold me on this intellectual angle that it was echoing Antonio and Zabriskie point, this anti-materialist message. <laughs> That was great fun. That was the one video that I wanted to go to the shoot of. I got there just before the toilet got it, and the explosive bloke says, I don't know how much to put in a toilet. I've never blown a toilet up before. And it's like, OK, five, four, three, two, we're like... Well, I was happy with it. I thought it was very unusual. I liked that um, 
uh, that it's peculiar, it's amusing, uh, but uh, puzzling at the same time. And it was fun for me to um, make a nod to a film that I admire, Zabriskie Point, and to have uh, you know that little secret that um, people are in on. If you are familiar with the film, then you know where it came from. And it's uh, fun to make that kind of homage to a filmmaker you admire. Roman was a gent, though. And look, obviously, he's like from a Hollywood dynasty, so things were getting quite surreal for us at that point. Roman's video was slick and focused, and it was one idea just worked. I did uh, uh, the video to um, slash dot slash dot slash dot com slash dot slash dot slash dot com that one. Dot com. Dot com. Dot 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 com. That's one of my favourites. Um, Tim Poe is a fantastic character. The song, the song sounded really, really, really obsessive to me. It was very repetitive and very driven, shall we say, as though there was some massive intake of something or other, possibly caffeine or something like that. Well, it was, it was a unique experience for me where I literally had not met the artist. Usually you sort of sit down and have a cup of coffee. Actually, I love a cup of coffee. Uh, just one. When I first met Norman, I, I, as I say, it was on the shoot, and I think he'd been up for a couple of days. I think it was a mixture of flights and drinking an awful amount of coffee. I said to him, why, why are you going back to panel making? He said, well, I'm the only superstar direct, video director who hasn't done a Fatboy Slim one. We knew that we wanted to use the MC in it. We wanted to do something that was performance based, but it couldn't just be a performance, not very fat boy slim. It's a wonderful night, you gotta take it from me. It's a wonderful night, come on and break it on down. It's a wonderful night, you gotta shake it from me. I thought, uh, why is it a wonderful night? And the only answer that made any sense was that uh, there's a full moon, which means that the singer is gonna turn into a the challenge that we faced was trying to get a big video on a much smaller budget and that meant us looking at new talent rather than expecting someone like Spike Jones to want to do another video for 30 grand. The whole crew was extremely inexperienced and uh, we didn't really know what we were doing in terms of like producing a big music video because uh, we just I just did it with all my friends and uh, constantly people were threatening to leave if they didn't get paid in cash and stuff like that. But I didn't know about any of that. As far as I could tell, it was going to go very well. I don't think I even saw a storyboard in that one. So I, I just saw the finished thing and I was I'm in hysterics. Well done, Latif. Hi, my name is Brian Belatic, and uh, I directed the music video for Fatboy Slim, Don't Let That Man Get You Down. The video is about a man named Don. Don likes to fish, but Don is a racist. And the sign said, long haired, freaky people need not to fly. And the sign said, long haired, freaky people need not to fly. If and there's the one message that I would like to give in life, it's don't be racist. You know, look after your fellow man. That would be my only kind of sort of axe to grind. You know, when, when they talk about racism, you know, they know ignorance and um, social insecurities. And um, Don's social insecurity is that he can't catch a fish. At the end of every video, Don dies. Um, and he dies a different way six different times. So there's six different versions to the video. He gets stabbed by a Vietnamese bookie. Another version, the neighborhood burglar asks Don if he's got the time and then, and then knifes him in the side. He gets 
basically balled and chained by a, a knight in shining armor, like Middle Ages style on a, on a horse. And then the last way he dies, he drowns in the public pool that uh, Paris Hilton and, and her funny looking friends are at. Doing a music video for Fatboy Slim is a totally different experience than doing a video for any other artist in my experience because um, basically the, everybody involved including Norman are they're very hands off when it comes to the creative process they let you do what you want to do and um, there's an immense amount of trust um, they're very giving in that way which is really awesome. the stakes to make a world in which all of God's children can live. It sort of had a message and a plot, which is probably why it doesn't look, it's, the, it's less fat voice than the rest. It has a plot. <laughs> Bird of Prey is about a 1960s US fighter pilot who takes acid, takes off, flies into the sun and then parachutes out the plane to discover that the whole thing was in his head. It's like a sort of warped piece movie basically. There's an epic scale to it but it does address the brief of being about flying in clouds. What I wanted to do is actually get one of those like mini helicopters and put a, a camera on it and actually give a bird's eye view. A bit like the snowman. We're walking on the road. Because uh, just because the way the song is, and because it's Bird of Prey, and it kind of it's got this sort of soaring quality. This is a guy who's just a sort of trained killer. He imagines what would happen if he um, could undo what he'd done, basically. I'd still like to, I'd like to just sit there. And, I think it's just, I just want to sit there with the joystick and these mini helicopters going, right, let's go to, let's go to the pavilion. Let's go, let's go over our house. We're a very small company, we do it. Hello, Hammer and Tongs. Hello, sorry, it's Garth. The first thing I think I wrote down was, an evolution of a cat. And then of course the artwork has this terrific photograph of this big guy on the front and the idea of just evolving to that man. Genius idea, really, on a massive sort of scale as well. It was a very complicated idea. We were summoned to Brighton. And then Norman came and met us and took us out for dinner. And basically he just said, do you, so I really like the idea, do you want to do it? And I said, yeah. He said, great, okay, anyway, what does everyone want, want for dinner? We had, we had to be quite inventive <laughs> with how we made it because of the budget. I mean, it was still a lot of money, but um, we had restrictions. We, we kind of got into that once we realised that you could, that you didn't have to be literal with it. I saw some rushes where you could see people's hands <laughs> wiggling things. Right here, right now, right here, right now. It was uh, still photos from all the backgrounds half of which were my sister's travel photos. We were running out of time. Nick had to go from exactly the right position to, as a start point, run for exactly, I think it's nine point something seconds, stop, catch a, a t-shirt and pull on a pair of jeans, but then finish in exactly the right position to then go to the next guy. We, we'd allowed hours for it, but of course he was so concerned with time, he just nailed it in the one <laughs> shot. So, right, that's that, right off. The cameo for right here, right now, was taking Norman's easy cameo to new levels. I just had to run up into the West End where he was being interviewed, put, give him a little McDonald's hat and a sort of, you know, apron, photograph him outside. And that, I think that's the last we ever saw him <laughs> holding a cheeseburger. We were buying him a cheeseburger on the way, so can you help this? It must have been the shortest 
video pitch I've, I've ever, I mean, well it is the shortest video pitch I've ever seen. And it was one of those that kind of, the, the clincher was the last two words in like 25 words. The man is Christopher Walken. <laughs> Spike and Christopher made that video, and when we got the awards for it, I actually said that you know, they deserve the award because I, you know, it's nothing to do with me. All I did was the soundtrack. So how are we going to get Spike in this video? I don't know, I'm going to get Spike in this week. God knows we've tried. He's What's he doing? He's making a feature film. I am Ula. I am Max. And we co-direct. And we're uh, from Tractor. Yes. You hit a bad kitty cat for getting out of bed. Now you get right back in. <laughs> We have been doing this, uh, we're a good team, I you're think, good yeah. Team. We shot the Fat Boy Slim video on the island of Kariaku. It was uh, chaos! Crazy! <laughs> it was oh, crazy! <laughs> there was this one, uh, the liquor was flowing. Yes. And uh, we had all these cameras everywhere. We caught it from these, uh, so many angles. You had a helicopter. <laughs> Technically, I think your mum is probably the best sort of technical one. Instead of it being some weird Euro art dance, they basically tied people to a big blue pole and shook them around. Push the tempo, push the tempo, push the tempo, push the tempo. We had low angles and wide angle lens. Why? Because this one person kept on asking wider. We want wider, so we're like, we could do wider. You don't need wider, but we could do wider. But it rocks. I like to think past the normal. Yeah. Um, I like to, it's, that's my stamp, as I say, to not think Normal. Push the tempo, 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 push the tempo. It's like a real life cartoon. I think that's the best way to describe it. You ain't a bad kitty cat for getting out of bed. Now you get right back in. Just awful. Terrible. Horrible. Can we get Ula a good banana? I was on tour in America and stopped off in LA. Yeah, and when I got to the hotel in LA, they said, oh, there's a package for you from someone called Spike. And it was a VHS, and it was this crackhead doing breakdancing outside the Chinese theater. There's a note saying, Dear Norman, I like your record, and I saw this guy dancing in the street to it. Thought you might like to see this Spike Jones. I'm like, what, he's Spike Jones? Right about now. Funk soul brother, check it out now. The funk soul brother, right about now. The funk soul brother, right about now. About now. About now. About now. As it turned out, he was actually Spike in it because no one knew what he looked like at that point. The first time I saw that, I didn't understand it. Norman said, "Look, can we just use that the video, even if it's just in the UK?" But whatever, we couldn't make it happen. I think everybody's reluctant for him to get a free video. For him to transform that into the video for Praise was just utter genius. So, you know, we're trying to spread our happiness, you know? Yeah. That little buzz of like, you had to be there, you know? Yeah. 
and, you know, it's like yeah. you're putting on a show. To the music choreographed, it was from you, from your heart. Some Fatboy Slim videos like Praise You, you cannot listen to the record without thinking of the video. They're inextricably linked, which is why Spike Jones is a genius, because he does things that are different to everybody else, but it kind of respects the record. It's not just, here's a weird idea tacked on to a record. It's kind of, a, it's a celebratory idea. Somebody walking by thinking, wow, these people are bad. Do they, do they think they're good? Or do they know they're bad? Are they joking? time in America for people to realize it was um, it, it wasn't a serious video it's, uh, entirely our own moves we uh, you know, choreograph a lot of them ourselves and create all our own our own material we gather from many different influences uh, it looked classical hip-hop yeah it looked uh, a little like um, street it looked like there was some kind of urban kind of urban street kind of moves in there a little bit. Yes. That's, that's where my background is. I, I was a uh, part of a b-boy posse in New York a few years ago. Well, not only were they 30 grand under budget, but they told us they were and gave the money back, which I think is probably unheard of in the video industry. Mind you, because I was there, I knew how much they'd spent. That's one of the best things we've ever done, I think, was to undermine all that pomp. Well, you know, we, we like to entertain, we like to energize, but we like to be very, we like to inform. I have to celebrate you, baby. I have to praise you like I should.